How does food either cause or reduce inflammation? Well, so the food is a key component that can help to dampen it down or switch it up, right? So there's a a nice tool that's been developed quite recently called the Dietary Inflammatory Index, which is a way of looking at foods according to their sort of potential inflammatory role. And anyone who listens to this podcast won't be surprised to know that a diet that's high in colorful fruits and vegetables, whole grains, healthy fats from things like extra virgin olive oil, they're the dietary patterns that tend to dampen inflammation and to help our immune system return to baseline. So this healthy sort of switch on and switch off when it's not needed. Whereas diets that are high in foods such as processed meats or added sugars like sugar sweetened beverages, sodas, they're the diets that really ramp up inflammation. And one of our own papers that we published from Predict One showed that when you have high circulating levels of these things called triglycerides, which result from either poor dietary fats, so poor quality fats, saturated fats, or high intake of sugars, when those go up a lot after a meal, they cause more inflammation. So even within one meal time, you can see an inflammatory response that's more than the inflammatory response needed for digestion alone. A good example of how this is an on-off process is when you have a meal, Jonathan, your body will have an inflammatory response to help you absorb nutrients in your small intestine. So this inflammatory response means that you're just able to extract nutrients with a higher blood flow from a slightly leakier gut just in that period after you eat to help with digestion. But then you want to switch it off. In our study, what we saw is that people who had this diet that was high in sugars, high in saturated fats, that inflammation stayed high for like six hours after the meal, which you don't want. We found people who had more visceral fat mass, so more of that metabolically active fat around your organs, and people who had a lower gut microbiome score tended to have more of that inflammation staying higher after a meal than people who had a better and This is really diet. important, just to put it in context, because as people know, when they go and see their family doctor, they talk about cholesterol levels and fat in food and all these factors, but there was a a large US study recently looking at outcomes over 30 years in health professionals in the US. And it showed that your levels of inflammation in the blood were like twice as important as your cholesterol levels in the blood. And I think this for the first time has really shown us that it doesn't mean you know cholesterol has no role, but compared to the role of inflammation, it is really minor. And the good thing is that diet can shift inflammation much quicker than it can shift, for example, a cholesterol level. And so, Tim, you're saying that inflammation was twice as important as my cholesterol levels for understanding whether I'm going to get sick? Correct. And it's that interplay between the cholesterol and the inflammation because it causes the damage to the blood vessels. That's what actually causes it. And then the cholesterol clogs it up. But you need the two factors. So it's interesting. Often you'll find people who have higher cholesterol levels, but actually fairly healthy arteries when you go and look at look at them. And then there's others who may have fairly normal cholesterol levels, but they've got more heart disease because their inflammation is high. But what's really nice is that a diet that lowers your cholesterol levels also helps with inflammation. So you're getting two birds with one stone. And statins actually work, it seems, primarily by reducing inflammation rather than by reducing the cholesterol level. And that's probably why they have this quite dramatic effect on heart disease and mortality. So it's all pointing towards inflammation being the main driver of so many diseases. So we need to understand much more about it, realize that everyone has it to some extent. It's not like a yes, no phenomenon. And that we should be doing everything we can to keep it to minimal levels. So Tim, Fede was describing the fact that we know that certain diets seem to lead to like lower inflammation than others. So you're describing that food matters, but do we understand why? We understand some of the reasons why, but I think it's important to step back a bit, look at the bigger picture here, and realize that gut health overall is probably one of the most important drivers of inflammation and our immune system. So we want to be thinking about what's really good for the, our overall gut health. And to do that, we really need a rich variety of different foods of all the chemicals that are in natural food. We need that diversity to make sure that we have all the good species we can possibly be nourishing inside our guts because they're like these chemical factories producing all these really good, often anti-inflammatory chemicals themselves. 
And we only get that through this massive diversity of plants. So one superfood it itself isn't going to do the job. You need a rich variety of them, eating the rainbow, as we've always called it, the high polyphenols, because they're super good chemicals for our gut microbes. You need things like fermented foods, which have anti-inflammatory effects. You need to avoid all the nasty stuff that uh, is comes from these highly processed, high-risk foods that have chemicals that have pro-inflammatory effects. So it's really important before we dive into the detail to just remember that if you can look after your gut health, keep the number of good bugs higher than the number of bad bugs, then that will push down your inflammation levels, however you manage to do it. I love that because if you feed your gut microbes, it actually helps you to maintain this really healthy lining of the gut with a nice thick mucin layer, which is like protecting the very delicate lining. And you can only really do that with a healthy gut microbiome that's fed plenty of plants, healthy fats. And going back to Tim was saying earlier, like we talked about the fact that the majority of the immune system cells sit just outside the gut. And when there's this really lovely barrier and good connection, the gut microbiome sends signals to the immune system to say, everything's okay, no need to react, you can calm down the inflammation. And that's why one of the key ways that people often describe feeling inflamed is when they have gut issues. They'll say, you know, I've got indigestion or I feel bloated or I've got, it's painful. Those are all signs of gut inflammation. And that's often the one that's quickest to show up and quickest to reverse with diet. So it sounds like the like the short summary here is long-term inflammation is really bad. Like this is really important in terms of affecting your long-term health. And you are saying that the food that we eat because of the way that it feeds our microbiome is sort of central to whether or not like that inflammation is always on or it's switched off? Yes, or degrees in between. So it's not necessarily an on-off switch. Uh, you can dial it down or dial it. So perhaps more like a thermostat than an on-off switch. So everyone has some level. And the question is, is it on like super high, medium, or really quite low, which is a good place to be in this modern world? Correct. And there are, you know, a lot of people with autoimmune diseases where the disease itself is causing the body to fight itself and they have raised inflammation levels. And anyone listening with an autoimmune disease know the consequence of that. They're getting the tiredness, the fatigue, you know, that often have depression as well. Um, they're stiff in the mornings. All these things that you get with these, these classic levels of inflammation, you're getting to a much more reduced extent when you, when you get to minor levels. But in a way, everyone is suffering to some extent. So everyone can improve whatever state of inflammation they have, yeah. even if they don't feel they're unwell. So let's start talking about some real actionable advice yeah. and talk about foods that can fight inflammation. At Zoe, we know small changes can create big results. Subscribing to this channel is one such change. It helps us reach more people and lets us bring you more of the latest science on health and nutrition. So if this video has given you something useful, subscribing is the easiest way for you to give us a little back.